Let's talk about Babel and why, even though it's my favorite book of all time, it seems to be one of the most polarizing books of all time. Quite literally, within a second of each other, I got comments saying that Babel was the best book of all time and comments saying that Babel was one of the worst books of all time on TikToks I've posted about the book. I'll throw a couple of those up on the screen, but this was nothing unusual. On every single video I post about Babel, within seconds of each other, I get comments talking about how much the readers love Babel and how much they've hated Babel. So I just wanted to make a longer form video about why I think it's the best book of all time and where I think a lot of the criticism and polarization around Babel comes from. And I'll say right off the bat that some of these criticisms are more valid than others. Right off the bat, I will say that at least some of the criticism around Babel is just snowflake people. And what I mean by that is that it's white Americans or white Europeans who seem to think that Babel, because it has anti-colonial messages, is inherently anti-white or racist in some way. And they say this specifically because of how the character Letty, one of the white main characters in this book, is portrayed. And that to me is an invalid criticism of Babel. It's just people getting offended for the sake of getting offended. It's people who get uncomfortable when we talk about uncomfortable things. It's people who find it offensive to just point out that white privilege exists. It's people who get offended when we talk about colonialism and how it still impacts the present day world. It's people who get offended when us people of color talk about how uncomfortable certain things make us, especially in Europe and in the United States. To those people, I really don't have anything to say. I don't find it productive to engage with people who think Babel is just racist or anti-white somehow. That's just a silly and ridiculous take and I'm not gonna engage with it. With that being said, I do think there are some valid criticisms of Babel. I tend to disagree with all of them, obviously, but I wanna take some time to discuss why. And I'm going to start here with this conversation I had with this person named Lisa. And I'm going to be throwing up the comments she left on my video and my responses to them throughout this video. But I would also just urge you to go to the TikTok video and read this thread for yourself because I thought it was very insightful, respectful, and a great discussion. And I'm going to try to do her position justice, but again, please go read her original comments in case I get anything wrong. But as I understood it, Lisa's overarching point about the book and why she didn't connect with it perfectly is because the main character, Robin, doesn't really have much agency. And he doesn't really himself drive the plot forward. Instead, he just seems to be there experiencing the book just as us readers are. Almost none of the key events that happen in the book happen because of Robin, the main character. And Lisa, as a reader, likes to have protagonists who are more impactful to the story and are more driven by their own agency. I'll be honest, Lisa seemed to remember the story better than I did. So as you'll see in the comments, I just had to defer to her on some of the facts that she was talking about that drove her opinion. And I'm not going to sit here and go page by page through the book and point out every instance where Robin actually made a decision for himself. I don't think that's productive. I don't think that really speaks to Lisa's overarching point. It is true that Robin in this book is less impactful to the story than a typical protagonist might be. It is true that he does seem to lack some agency, especially in terms of driving the plot forward. But as you'll see in my responses to Lisa, I don't really take issue with that. I think that serves the purposes of this book. The purpose of this book, as I see it, is to explore the impact colonialism had on the people who were displaced by colonialism, especially the people who were brought over from their home countries to places like Europe to serve the needs of the colonial powers. And more broadly, I think this book is about the struggles us people of color and immigrants face when we move to countries like the UK and the US and end up contributing to systems that do very much continue to oppress our home countries. And given that that commentary was the purpose of this book as I understand it, I think Robin was a perfect protagonist. Most of us aren't crazy revolutionaries who are making crazy decisions that are going to change the course of history. Most of us are just trying to figure out our own place in this world. And that's exactly what Robin was doing. So the fact that he didn't personally drive the plot forward isn't a big deal to me. He served the purpose of the story and he was a character that I personally very much connected with. The internal struggles that Robin faced about whether or not he should contribute to the British Empire or whether he should just throw everything out the window were ones that I really struggled with myself and I know a lot of other people of color and immigrants especially struggle with. Another criticism I have found fair is that the ending is a little abrupt. For example, this person says it just ends. There's no hint that the protest worked or that Robin's sacrifice meant anything. We know some babblers escaped and are working for the government, so it's not over. It isn't complete. And I think Arquang has mentioned the possibility of going back to this world at some point. And I did find the ending a little abrupt myself too, but I think that it also worked. Robin had no idea how his sacrifice would turn out. Robin had no idea what would happen after he made that decision. So I think it's kind of poetic to leave us with as much information as Robin Robin would have had when he made that crazy decision. Because again, the book is all about Robin's decision. So leaving us with the information that Robin had, I think is poetic and does the book justice. Another valid criticism I've seen of Babel is the pacing. And more broadly, this criticism has been levied against Rao of Kwong herself. And this one has puzzled me a little more. I think it's less of a valid criticism than Lisa's criticisms. Just because not every book has to be Mad Max. This is not an action heavy book. This is not an action book. There are some crazy action sequences towards the end, but I don't think they're actual action sequences. But I don't think every book needs to be an action book. It's fine if you prefer reading action or you prefer faster paced books, but that's definitely not what this book is about. It's not what it's intended to be. So I don't think it's fair to judge it on that basis. I also saw a lot of 
criticism saying that the characters just felt very two-dimensional and it weren't very well fleshed out. And I'll be honest, I have no idea what people are talking about when they say these things. Again, Robin might not be the most exciting protagonist, but I found him to be very believable and very relatable. I also thought Rami, Letty, and Victoire, all of their characters were very well fleshed out with complex backstories, complex relationships, and distinct personalities that mesh together very well. I really don't know what people are talking about. I don't know what more R.F. Kwan could have done to develop the characters better than she did. And talking about these critics of the book that I will not give any light to, they left comments saying things like Robin and his friends were essentially terrorists blowing up a tower in the West. They said things like they shouldn't have done what they did at the end of the book. Instead, they should have used what they learned to target the leaders of the colonial movement. If you look at it closely, is the classic don't inconvenience me, I've done nothing wrong critique. Where people criticize street marches, for example, for targeting the public instead of the leaders who are causing the injustice being protested. And I just don't think that's a valid critique. All of the UK benefited and continues to benefit from colonialism. What they did was dismantle the power structure in place that allowed the UK to be the colonial power that it was, at least in this fictional version of it. What they did was one of the most effective things they could have done as a means of resistance. The fact that it had an impact on a lot of civilians as well, I don't think makes it the wrong thing to do. And what I'll say about this is that even if you disagree with the main character's choices in any book, I don't think that's a reason to criticize the book. You can disagree with the themes and the messages of a book while still recognizing that the book executed them perfectly. In other words, I'm not going to judge a book because I disagree with the message it's sending. I'll judge a book based on how well it does what it's trying to do itself. Otherwise, anytime a character makes a decision you don't like, you should be criticizing the book and that just doesn't make any sense. And a lot of people that leave this comment talk about how R.F. Kuang beats you over the head with the message that colonialism is bad. And they seem to take issue with that. I'll be honest, I don't really have patience for this critique. It seems very silly to me. Colonialism is bad. Colonialism was bad. The issue does not deserve nuance. I've said this in a TikTok video too, but I'll say it again. The message of this book, the theme of this book is the necessity of violence. It's about the struggles that Robin faces in terms of whether he should just continue his life as it's going and end up contributing to the British Empire or whether he should take some more drastic action given the position that he's in. That's the central theme of the book and for that, R.F. Kuang includes a lot of nuance. So the people out there that just insist that there should have been more nuance about colonialism, about how there were other colonial powers in the world and not just the British, about how there might have been some economic reasons to justify colonialism, to me, that's just all very silly. That's not the central theme of the book. If you want to read a book that justifies colonialism, this isn't the book for you and it doesn't need to be. For, and it doesn't need to be for it to be a good book. For example, this person left the message that Babel felt very preachy. I'm all for anti-colonialistic messaging, but this book felt like it sacrificed too much from the fantasy aspect to get its message across, essentially. And again, I don't understand what this person is talking about. The message here wasn't that colonialism is bad. Of course it is. The message was that sometimes it might be necessary to do more than just live your life as it's going. The message was that to shake things up to truly make an impact, sometimes you have to do some drastic things and disrupt your personal life. Another comment I got, and I think I got this because I almost exclusively talk about fantasy book, is that Babel lacks real fantasy elements, or he doesn't have enough of them. And this, I think, is a valid critique. You know, if you're someone who wants to read more classic fantasy, a book that's more heavily focused on the magic system and the world building, Babel isn't for you. Babel is set in a fictionalized version of Earth, and the only fantastical element of it is the silver magic system. If that's not enough fantasy for you because you only read fantasy, that's understandable and I won't critique you for it. I do think this is an important read and I would still encourage you to read it, but that I think is one of the most honest critiques of it given that this is marketed as a fantasy book. But that's not a critique that would keep me from giving this book a 10 out of 10, which is what I give it. I also got a lot of other really absurd comments, things like Arv Kwong's writing is just so similar to JK Rowling's Big Yuck. I don't really even know what to say to that. I have no idea what this person was talking about. I have no idea what they found similar between Arv Kwong and JK Rowling. I'm not going to engage with this comment. I just wanted to give you an example of the kind of absurd comments that people sometimes leave on these videos. I'll end my little spiel on this thing about nuance by reading this comment from Lonto Knight on TikTok. Maybe I never felt like she was beating me over the head about how colonialism is bad because I've never felt the need to defend colonialism. I think that sums up what I was trying to say pretty perfectly. And I also read this comment from Tattoos and Tales. It needs to be blatant. It needs to be angry, raw, violent. It makes some readers uncomfortable, sit with that feeling and ask why. Because colonialism was, is never comfortable for the colonized. And all these comments about how there was more than just one colonial power, so why are we exclusively focusing on the British colonizers? I say two things. Number one, this book is set in the UK. It's very much about a Chinese immigrant transported from China to the UK, as was the case with a lot of people back in the 1800s. Why does it need to comment also on other colonial powers? This commenter's focus specifically on the fact that Japan was also colonizing power, but this book also doesn't comment on Portuguese colonialization. It doesn't comment on Spaniard colonialization. Why does it need to? It's set in the UK. It's talking about UK colonialization. And the second thing I'll say is that UK were the colonizers. To say that there was nothing particularly unique or atrocious about what the United Kingdom did is just silly. At the end of the day, this book really connected with me for the reasons I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and I'll end this video by reading this comment from Abby Tate. As a Chinese adoptee who grew up in a white town, I've never connected to a character more than Robin in my life. I thank RFK every day for writing this book, personally.
You cannot like this book. You're allowed to give this book a one star, two star, three star, whatever you think it deserves. But you cannot deny the impact this book has had on a lot of immigrants and how much they've connected with this book. About how much they've connected with the themes and the messages of this book. There's a reason it's so highly well regarded. It's not just a book talk viral book. It's not just a trend. This is an important work of literature. It's a classic work of literature. And to those of you who still haven't read it for some reason, I highly implore you to read it. I'll also read this comment from someone named Christina. I agree, I don't understand white reviewers, readers requesting nuance about white colonizers who've only ever harmed us. There is no nuance. We did not need saving. They destroyed our cultures. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this book.